Welcome to Queen's Future Successors, where Regina Eileen Woodard is the president and CEO. The mission of Queen's Future Successors is to provide financial literacy and educational information to empower the next generation of high school students and young adults to grow financial wealth. We are excited to partner with the Clarence E. Phillips Ascend Foundation Mark for Success program in conjunction with OSHA to educate youth in the community and prepare them for future success. Queen's Future Successors is excited to share our jewels for success, which focus on financial IQs, saving for the present and the future, the basics of establishing a checking and savings account, financial wellness, creating a budget and managing expenses, and entrepreneurship. By the end of this program, youth will be economically empowered and financially savvy. We are excited about the youth in our program and look forward to what their future brings. Welcome to Queen Future Successors. I'm excited for our event with the youth of the Clarence E. Phillips Ascend Foundation, Mark for, Marks for Success program. This evening, we have a great town hall planned with some amazing students who have been through our program. I would like to introduce to you, Sanjia, who is our co-facilitator for tonight's town hall. Hello, everyone. I am Sanjia Wiggins, and I am extremely excited to co-facilitate co tonight's program with these brilliant youth. I look forward to hearing from our special guest, Rosie Richardson, as she brings the students a workshop on entrepreneurship. So, Regina, tell us a little bit about yourself and your program. Well, I'm glad you asked. Of course, my name is Regina, Regina Alain Woodard. Um, I am Regina, the queen of car loans and credit. But tonight we're going to talk about the Queen Future Success Program, which is um, Queen Future Success is a program for you to assist them with what we call jewels, mm -hmm. educating them on their financial IQs, savings for, the, for their present and the future. The basis of establishing a checking and a savings account financial wellness, creating a budget, and managing expenses, and entrepreneurships tonight, Sanjia. Wow, this sounds like it's going to be an exciting evening. I look forward to hearing all of these things so that I can become financially savvy also. <laughs> After a short break, we will return and start this amazing town hall. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Queen's Future Successors. So let's go ahead and get started. Please help us welcome four youth from the Mark for Success program through the Clarence E. Phillips Ascend Foundation. First, we have Madison Durham. Madison? Hi, I'm Madison Durham. I am the new president of the Truth Ascend Coalition. Nice to meet you, Madison. Next, we have Lauren McNear. Hi, I'm Lauren McNair, and I am the newly elected secretary of the Ascend Foundation. Nice to meet you, Lauren. Next, we have Michaela Powell. Hello, everyone. I am Michaela. I am the new vice president of the Ascend Truth Youth Coalition. Nice to see you, Michaela. Next, we have the one and only gentleman for this evening, Mr. <laughs> Brian Bex. Brian? I'm Brian Bex. I was the former vice president of the Ascend Youth Truth Coalition. So I hope that you all are so excited as I am about tonight's town hall. So why don't we go ahead and get started? I will turn it over to Regina. So students, let's have some dialogue tonight. Let's test your memory. I'm excited to test your memory. So my first question is, how did you cash your check before you started the program? And how are you doing it now? And what is the difference? Okay, so about two years ago, when I got my first job, and like finally got my first paycheck, I didn't have a bank account yet. So I went to the store to cash it. And um, I was really confused, because after I got my money back, it wasn't the same amount as what was on the check. And like, I counted it like 10 times to make sure I wasn't tripping. But then my mom told me that when you cash your check in the store, they take some of your money. And I did not like that. 
at all. So um, now I have a bank account and I just put the check right into my account and I get all of my money, thankfully. <laughs> so that's, you know what, that's a, that's a great point. Do you know what the thing about it is that when you're young, you learn. When you're young, you learn. <laughs> so they took some of your money and you got smart when you got with the program, like I'm going to open an account, right? So now you get all your money. You know, I, I'm glad you said that because I believe in getting all my money, too. <laughs> <laughs> so that leads us to our next question. Uh, let's see. Again, testing your memory and to see if you all were paying attention in the program. Debit cards versus credit cards. What is the difference between the two? Uh, I'll Which, take that one. I'll okay. Take yes, Mr. Oh. Banks. <laughs> okay. So a debit card, when you, when you swipe your debit card, that comes straight out of your account. So, and then, so a debit card is usually like the Visa logo and you swipe it, it comes straight out of your account. With a credit card, you have to apply for, it's different things you have to do to get it. And then you have to pay interest on it. Unless you pay it right back, you have to pay interest on it when you swipe that credit card. Oh, hey, Regina. Oh. You all did a great job educating these youth on um, what the difference is. So I have a follow up. So is it the debit card or the um, does it come out of your checking or your savings account? Your checking. Yes, you got it. Ding, ding, ding. I need a, I need a bail. All right. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Excellent job. Excellent answer. Um, my next question is. Right before, well, st before starting the program, did you know about creating a budget and balancing your expenses? How are you doing it now? I'll take that question. Um, yes, before I did the program, I did know how to do a budget and balancing my expenses as well. Uh, you know, my parents, they're not so ones, they're like, okay, if you're gonna go shopping, you got this limited amount and you gotta work with what you have. So I knew that if I was going to go out and let's say my mom gave me $250, $250 I'm not going to spend it all at the mall. I may have some left over, maybe a good 50 to 100 just in case I wanted to get something to eat or something. But I knew that I had to budget really well because I was going to be at the mall all day and I probably was going to be with my dad for the weekend. So I knew that I had to really like space out what I bought within the day. And then balancing my expenses, I knew that out the week, I didn't, I don't really spend a lot throughout the week. So I may get some food or usually I'm in school most of the time. So when I leave school, I'm going to cheer practice. I'm not really, you know, I'm not really going nowhere to spend anything. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I need to join cheer. Yeah. Well, me too. Is it, am I too old? <laughs> no, <laughs> that'll stop me from spending money. I think I might join here. <laughs> well, you know what? You 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 brought up um, good points because you said that during the week you didn't really spend any money. So in other words, you saved your money to the weekend because you know what you wanted to do on the weekend. So you planned out your expenses and you planned out your budget, right? Yeah, because Friday, I can tell you, my weekend is very strict. Friday is usually my late night skates, we'll go late night skating, and Saturday we'll go to the mall. So I knew that throughout the week, since I really wasn't spending anything, whatever I got from throughout the week, I would save it and use it towards my weekend because I knew that I was going to be going out. And then I would do it every week and, you know, keep saving till the weekend. Look wow, at that's that. That's a great answer. I think I, I wish, I didn't do that when I was your age. No, I just spent money. <laughs> <laughs> but I was going to I was going to make a joke. The reason why students don't spend the money is because their parents are spending money. But I digress. So but that's why that's why we have the program and that's why we have the jewels. That's why we teaching them is because why they're going to, you know, when you look at your own money that you're spending, even though maybe they, you know, they earn their money, mm -hmm. they're going to be watching their parents. Yes. And then some of the kids now today is they're going to tell their parents. Right. <laughs> OK, you, you, you don't need that over there. Why do you spend in that? Do you are you budgeting your money? I think my, my kids do that to me all the time. So, okay, so yeah. that's the truth. <laughs> that's true. They, they do it more to Raymond. But anyway, okay. All right. So you mentioned something like Regina said about saving. So my next question to see if you all remember this is how important is an emergency fund or what is an emergency fund? 
I got that one. So an emergency <laughs> fund is like, and then it, it like it's funds that you only tap into like in case of emergency. So if I was in the hospital and my medical bills, we couldn't pay for them. I would tap into that fund to help pay for the medical bills. Or if I got into a car accident, I would tap into that fund for a car accident. You know what? That's a good point. Um, and you know what? I'm glad that you use that as an example, because I feel like there are so many adults that don't understand that piece. Right. And you may be young and you may not be responsible for your medical bills and so on there. So on. But going forward and when you go off to college and different things like that, you'll always have that in the back of your head. So great job. Great example. <laughs> well, you know, I hope we have, I know we have adults listening, but I just really hope the adults are taking notes. I do too. <laughs> uh, my, my next question is, um, what are your takeaways from our program and how did it help you? How's it going to help you later in life? How are you going to apply it later on? Okay, so my takeaways from the program really is just learning how to save my money and use my money in the right ways. Because there's so many different things that you can use your money on that you may want to do, but it's not necessarily what you need to do with your money. So the program really just helped me when it comes to budgeting things out, how to save money, how to invest my money. And yeah. Okay. Anybody else? That was an excellent answer. <laughs> With me, what I took from the program is that, like Brian said, it's just about, for me, learning how to save and using my money wisely because like, you know, I don't want to go to college and just be buying any and everything and then next thing you know I don't have no money left so I want to learn how to use it wisely especially if like let's say I want to become an entrepreneur I need to know how to save how to budget what am I making in that what am I going to use this money for am I going to put this money towards traveling or hotel expenses like I need to know what I'm saving and what I'm doing with my money because if you don't know what you're doing with your money, it's just, it's a bad outcome in the long run. And I don't want a bad outcome. I want to know what I'm doing with it and what I'm using it for. Hey, Michaela. Wow. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just being real. She said she's being real. Yes. We're going to check back in with her in 10 years. Wait, we're going to check. We're going to check. Matter of fact, we're going to check back with you in, in um, five years. Five, yeah. After college <laughs> and all that. <laughs> okay. So, um, so, Great job telling us the things that you've learned from the program, but we have a couple additional questions. So during the program, we talked about overdraft protection, right? And um, automatically transferring accounts from your funds and um, different things like that. So to any, would anybody like to expand on what overdraft protection is? Okay, so let's see. So is, oh, if someone's got it? Yeah, I can do it. Okay. All right. So overdraft protection, it brings money from like your savings account into your, um, your spending account, I guess. So your account doesn't ever actually get overdrawn. And so you won't have to pay that overdraft fee. Okay. Is it a good or bad thing to have to have overdraft protection? It's definitely a good thing. You should always like try and do that if it's an option. Oh, great job. Ooh, okay. Wow, I okay. love that. <laughs> I bet some of the people listening don't even know what overdrive protection is. Bounce, bounce. Now they know. Okay, bounce, now bounce, they know. Bounce, You're right. Bounce. That's the purpose. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, one thing about overdraft protection is it does um, usually come with a fee, right? And but that fee is better than just not having the money available. Mm -hmm. So overdraft protection, if you go to the store and you know you have a you have a big bill or something that you need to pay or something like that, and you're gonna get paid on Friday, not encouraging you to have to incur overdraft mm -hmm. fees. However, mm -hmm. having that protection there will allow you to be able to still um, get gas in your vehicle, for example, if you mm -hmm. um, are in need. Cause sometimes, you know, all of us fall on hard times sometimes. So that's a great, great thing to always have if you need more information about that Regina the Queen of Car Loans can help you well you know what the great thing about it what the great thing what I love about tonight is that we're educating educating the students but also educating the adults because a lot of the terms that we're using tonight talking about the jewels yes. you know being in the car business for 21 years um, I have a lot of um, parents and grandparents well grandparents grandparents grandkids that come and they get cars mm -hmm. and 
they don't actually know these terms. And yes. so to teach it right now, this is, I can't wait for five or 10, five or 10 years from now. I know. Right. Follow up. <laughs> so, so my next question is, um, and I want you all to be truthful. <laughs> Have you ever, have you overdrawn your checking account or heard of overdraft? I heard of overdraft, but if anybody knows my parents, <laughs> I will never overdraft my account, <laughs> ever. They write their LinkedIn to my account. So I'm grateful that they're there for to just, you know, be right there to say, hey, I think you you spending a little too much. You might have to slow down, buddy. You know, but I've never overdraft mine, but I have heard of overdraft. Okay. okay, but I'm not going to lie. There was this one time <laughs> where I came really, really close. Like, thankfully, I didn't because I checked my account before I got in line. But mm-hmm. if I had just, like, swiped it and didn't even check, I would have been overdrawn. Well, thank you for being truthful. Right. <laughs> thank you for your honesty. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay. So you all have done such a great job, but as Regina mentioned, hopefully there's some adults listening as well. Right. So we kind of wanted to go over some of the tips that we kind of learned in the program too. So I believe we talked about about six tips preventing overdraft protection. So I'll start off. So I'm thinking the one that I would like to talk about or just say really quick is make sure you opt in to overdraft protection. So again, we've educated everybody on it, but in case someone wasn't listening, it is a protection just in case you have an emergency. I would only suggest an emergency situation. If you don't have any money in your account and you have to get gas or something like that, is protection, but there will be a fee. Some of the fees are $18, some of them are $30. So let me see. Hmm. Anybody have any other idea of one of the six preventing for six tips? Oh, and some are 35. Oh, um, don't go I to that have, bank. <laughs> I have one. Um, one of my tips was just to watch your account on a regular, um, just so you don't overdrive just to see how much you can budget out for things as like groceries, gas, you know, like Michaela said, going out on the weekends, just watch your account to see what you're working with. Okay. I like that. Mm -hmm. Watch your account to see what you're working with. with. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I have one. Mine is set up alerts for like, you know, your low balances. Like when you, your account, when it's logged into your phone, there are certain alerts that you can set that will tell you or just let you know that your account balance is getting low. So you may want to like, just for a protection way, just it helps you stay leveled so you don't go into, you know, a low balance at all. She said stay level. Stay level. I stay level. But I have something to say. Wow. If you have more than 10 dings, I'm just kidding. No, no. <laughs> You might want to reevaluate, but no, that's a great point, Michaela. Uh, any, any other tips? Yeah, um, like if you deposit or if you deposit or transfer your money, like it's like right after you get an overdraft fee, like try to make sure you're keeping up with your overdraft fees and not letting them get out of hand. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. That's a good point. It's there to protect, but it can really get um out of hand like you said and if you keep using your card then you're recurring more 35 dollars. you said yeah, you know what let me just say this one point this is just a, a tip mm-hmm. um if you do overdraw your account um don't just accept that overdraft fee make a phone call to that for your financial institution and beg for forgiveness you know i made a mistake you know it, this is just my first time it's true you know just just, I'm not going to, not big, but you asked too, because they would say yes or no. They'll waive the fee. That's true. And I mean, that's $35 or $30 or $18 back in what? Your bank account. Ching, ching. Ching, ching. Alert, so, alert. So, <laughs> and that's anything you do in life. You want to, you know, if you make a mistake, you know, just, you know, can you, can you do something about it? You know what I mean? Just, you know, it's, it's like you, you saying you're sorry, but it's money's going back in your account. You made a mistake because you're human. Own up. Any other tips? Own up. Yeah, another tip is to, like, link your main account to, like, another account. Mm. So, like, you can always make sure that you can, like, transfer money over if you need to or, like, pretty much just do anything. And don't let it be your parents' account. I'm just kidding. Yeah. My kids, I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> my kids can see everything in my bank account. <laughs> That's a great tip. That's a great tip. So yeah, so like if you have a couple of, it's always good to probably have a couple of checking accounts, right? And so make sure that they're linked. If you have them at the same bank, you can link them. And if you ever get into a bind where maybe the one where you have for spending is getting low, you get that alert. And then you can transfer money from maybe the one that you have a direct deposit into. Um, another tip, I think the sixth tip that I would like to talk about is um, maybe even opting in to get a prepaid debit card. So that's an option if you don't want to always be um, dipping into your banking account or your checking in your savings account. Maybe you get a prepaid debit, debit card, which you can then put a certain amount on and then that's the that's the amount you know to spend so Michaela when you go to the mall on the weekends you put that 250 that's a big that's a big big allowance yeah wow I'm I'm coming over and get part of your allowance (laughs) exactly send me your address through the text I'll be over there (laughs) oh wow that's awesome So, Sanjia, yes. are you done with your questions? I am done. Absolutely. Yeah. Sanjia, I think the kids did an outstanding job tonight. What do you think? I think they did amazing. And I um, hope my children are listening in, too. And um, I think that you all are going to be set up for an excellent future. Your parents have done a great job. And you participating in the Queen Future Successors and Marked for Success with the SIM Foundation um, is just enhancing that. <laughs> Well, thank you, Sanjia. We'll, we'll be right back after this short break, and we'll return with Rosie Richardson, we'll, which she will give the students an overview on entrepreneurship. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome back to the Queen's Future Successors event tonight, Town Hall. We hope that you're enjoying yourself and getting some jewels of knowledge. So next, I would like to introduce to everyone, Miss Rosie Richardson. Rosie attended Whittier Jefferson Junior High in Pontiac and Pontiac Central. I, 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 I'm going to say go Chiefs. I, I'm not from here, but I'm going to say it. I'm just going to say it. I do. I know what team it is, right? Uh, She also attended Oakland University. I'm pretty sure you're a pioneer like me. Yes. (laughs) With a Bachelor of Science and a Master's Degree um, of Arts in Teaching. You also attended Wayne State University and we received a School of Administration Michigan Certification Teaching and Administration. You were also a principal, is that correct? Yes. A teacher, an adult education GED coordinator. And you are also an advocate for Beyond Scared Straight. I remember that. (laughs) Vision Impaired Person Support Volunteer, Community Service Projects at Pontiac Library, Public Library, a consultant for college admissions, scholarships, high school ACT prep. That's good to know as well, especially for the youth on this call. Emily's List member, Ready to Run Michigan, and Oxford University Publication in Oxford, England. Please help me welcome Ms. Rosie Richardson. Thank you, Ms. Wiggins. I appreciate that. Um, and I'm just excited to be here this evening. And of course, our youth are our future. And I just want to let them know that as we talked about, you guys talked about uh, financial literacy, it goes into some of the things that you need in order to have the avenue of becoming an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur is very important. Uh, Some young people think about being an entrepreneur like, oh, am I going to let someone down initially because I'm not going to college? That's not necessarily true. Everyone does not need to go to college, okay? You may need to take a class or two or some kind of program that will initially prepare you uh, for being an entrepreneur, the business course or planning and so forth, but you don't necessarily have to go to college in order to be an entrepreneur. The first thing you need to do is decide on your passion. What are you passionate about? You know, as you grow up through and and you go through life, you think about all the things you did when you were in preschool or or kindergarten, the little outfits you used to dress up in. 
And then you think about when you get to high school or when you get ready to graduate, okay, now you're going into the real world. What is it I'm passionate about? And sometimes it doesn't even have to be when you're getting ready to graduate. You may have an idea that you're passionate about when you're in even middle school or elementary school. You think about the young people with the lemonade stands, those are entrepreneurs. You, you think about those kind of situations. You think about whether or not you went to school. And I know you can think about some young person that came to school that had a locker full of candy that was selling. That was a young entrepreneur, okay? Although you weren't supposed to have those kind of things, but they were still being an entrepreneur, okay? They were taking uh, an item that they had and they were getting money for their services or a product that they provided. So one thing that you can do, and I think with Queen Future Successors that we did, is we have you create a vision board. And with the vision board, that's something that not only when you're young, but as you get older, you want to look at it, you want to think about the things that you want to do. And a vision board will say, if I'm passionate about a product, a service, um, or program, what is it I want to do with those particular items? And when you do that, you have an opportunity to look back and say, okay, this is how I get there. This is what I want to do. So you make a plan. And when you make your plan, your plan has to include several things. One is, okay, this is the thing that I really want to do. I'll have a product, a service, or a program that I want to provide. And once you do that, then you look and you do some research on that. Who has that product right now? Who has that service? Who has that program? You want to make sure that whoever you could, because you're going to compete, because remember, it's a big world out there, and you want to make sure that you know who you're competing against and how you can make your product, your service, or your program uh, competitive to other people, and so that you can get the most out of what you're going to offer to people when you do that research. Then you think about cost. You think about, do I need a lot of money for costs in order to have the, my program, project, or service? Not necessarily, okay? Oftentimes, young people have initially taken items that they had around the house. You can have a resale shop, okay? You have toys or items that you had before, or even clothing that you might have outgrown or really didn't like that you may have gotten for Christmas or something. You've been holding on to those things, a resale shop. You have a host of ideals that you could be passionate about and you can use in order to, to reach your goals and the dreams that you have. Those are very important. Then you think about your target population. Who are the people that I want to buy my product, my service, or my program? And you, when you think about that, you think about, am I looking at the population of people my age, younger than me? Am I looking for adults? Am I looking for the seasons, as I say, adults, and that would be the older people, your grandparents or people like that. Or it could be a combination of people that you want to, uh, to buy your product, service, or your program. And once you decide on that, that's part of your plan. These are all things that you have to put in your plan or in your vision board as to what you want to provide. And when you talk about your cost, again, you want to know, where am I going to get the money from? Do I need the money? And if so, how do I get the money? Do I go to my parents? Uh, do I go to my big brother, big sister? Do I look at my piggy bank that I've been holding on forever, decide what I'm going to do with that? Do I need to get a job first? You have to think about all of those when you're putting your plan together and deciding who your target population is and how you're going to be able to address them. Those are very key, important things that you want to do. Supply and demand. Again, when you talk about your target population, you have to talk about supply and demand. And if you're a high school student, even a middle school student, uh, having taught social studies, one thing you'll find out is you're going to talk about, they're going to talk about supply and demand. If I have something that I can supply, is there a great demand for it? If there's not a great demand for it, what do I do in my plan to make it so that people, it becomes a, a great demand for people? Okay, and then how am I going to be able to address that if I what my product or my passion is, how do I do that? So initially, I am going to have a big population of people that want my items, service or program that I'm going to offer. Sustainability. How do I sustain my program, my project or my program or my product? 
how am I going to make sure that it continues? And it's not like, as they say, sometimes in restaurants, they say restaurants, uh, most restaurants are in a period of 18 months go out of business. Well, if you have a product or service or a program, how am I going to sustain that? How do I make sure that I'm going to have the supply and the demand for the, my, what I have to offer to people? Again, that has to do with your target population and the people that you want to provide those items to. And with your research, you're going to be able to go back and look and you're going to say, this is what I have, okay? And this is what other people have to offer. Now, in my plan, I'm looking at what other people are doing, how long they've been in business, and what I have to do in order to surpass them, okay, with what I have to offer. And you want to be excited about doing that, and you want to always go back and review what you've done thus far. And within your plan, you have a checklist, the pros and cons of what it is you have to offer and what you've done in order to achieve your goals. That's very, very important. And where will you operate your, your business? That's important too. Am I going to operate from home? Am I going to operate from a, a storefront? Okay. Am I going to operate from a building in which I have to pay rent or consider at some point to buy? Or I'm going to share a building with someone else? All of those things have to be considered. And those are things when you do your research and you do your planning, you're going to go back and you're going to have to address all of those items one at a time to make sure you're sustainable and what it is and what you're passionate about. So those are very key things that you have. I could go on and on, but at this point in time, I want to give you an opportunity to think about some of the things that I've said. And I have one young lady that I just, I have to smile at because <laughs> I think I shared it. And I hope you don't mind is that when she was coming up, I was passionate about her and her coming to school. And I went by her house to make sure I, she came to school because I was passionate about her. And I think she's passionate about the things that she wants to do. Okay. And so with that note, I just want to let you know that your passion is important. Becoming an entrepreneur is important. Financial literacy is important. And you have to think about all of these things that you plan for your future. And it does not necessarily have to include a four-year degree. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Mrs. Richardson. I um, got some nuggets and some jewels out of that as well. Um, so uh, uh, my family and I, we have so many different um, ideas of different things. So we are um, entrepreneurship spirits over here. So it is very important to have something that you're interested in doing. I really appreciate you talking about the supply and demand. Um, a lot of people have ideas on different things that they want to do, but uh, that's a good place to start first. What is the demand, you know, and then will you be able to keep up with the supply that's needed? And so, I just to, can I just yeah. say this? Yes. It's one of the things with the Queen's Future Successor that we've done is we've had three phases that we have had young people come and we've given them an opportunity to not only have their business plan in place, but we've given them the opportunity to present uh, they've had pop-ups and they've understood what it is. And, and we have initially uh, given them an opportunity before they go out with their pop-ups is to see what it is to sell to a smaller population that we have targeted for their services and so forth. So we're excited about that. And we want to continue to do that and make sure that they have a starting point and a seed foundation for them to make sure that they make a difference in what they want to do as entrepreneurs, because we're excited about them and we're going to always be there and we're going to be able to. And one thing I did not say is be sure that you have a mentor and our, the Queens Fruit Successor, we have mentors there. So I have a couple of questions that I want to help facilitate to see if you all were listening to Miss Richardson. <laughs> so let's see. First, Brian, how would you define entrepreneurship? Um, I think being an entrepreneur is somebody who decided to open up their own business or give service to somebody else on their own without anybody else you know, like big corporations or things like mm. that. Rosie, what do you think about that answer? I, I think, I think it's a very good answer, and, and I, I and I think it it's important because 
you're, you're thinking about not feeding into someone else's ideal. You're taking your own ideal, your own business. And I think that's really important. And I think you, you, you keyed in on it. Thank you. <laughs> Great job, Brian. So let's see. The next question I have is for, let's see, uh, Madison. What do you need to be an entrepreneur? To be an entrepreneur, you need to be, have very good communication skills and you need to create a budget and a managing plan. So like to get your product out there, you need to be able to market it to make it like what, like make people want it. And you need to have a budget so that, you know, like I can't spend, I can't spend over this. I can't spend, uh, I can't like here I, on filming, I can't spend more than $30. And then on uh, clothing, I can't spend more than 20 Rosie, what do you think? I think good because you know what? You have to know what your overhead is. You need to know what your spending limits are and you want to don't want to go over. So I think that was well answered. Good job, Madison. <laughs> Great job. They were listening. Yes. All right, let's see. I have a couple more questions. So let's see. This one may be a little challenging. I don't know. I don't know. We have some brilliant young people today. Let's see. Michaela. Name three different types of entrepreneurs. Okay. Um, three different types. I'm going to say you have the creator, the builder, and the operator as your three different entrepreneurs. So maybe it was just challenging for me and not you. <laughs> you know, who knows? Great job. <laughs> Great, excellent job. Um, you know, I, I know a lot of people that are probably entrepreneurs that probably couldn't off the top of their head name those three off. Absolutely. Great job. <laughs> Michaela, of course you're one of mine. So, you know. You know. Let's see. One more question. Uh, Lauren, it looks like you're up. <laughs> Do you need a lot of money to be an entrepreneur? Why or why not? Okay, so that's kind of a complicated question because it really just depends on what kind of business you're starting and like how much you might, how much money you need for that business. So like I guess technically the answer would be no because there are some businesses where you do not need a lot of money. As Miss Rosie said in her presentation, like the kids who did the lemonade stands and sold candy in school, they didn't have a lot of money, but they were still entrepreneurs. So you really do not need a lot of money to be an entrepreneur. Ms. Richardson, what do you think? Great answer. And you know what? I'm glad she, she remembered what I said about young people and starting out and not needing a lot of money because you don't want to discourage anybody. Great job. So I have a, another question for you, Ms. Richardson. Yes. So as we look at these wonderful, brilliant young people um, on the screen and think about all the great answers they've given tonight and um, how they were very attentive. What is one additional thing that you would suggest that they um, should maybe add to their? And I, I, and that's a good question. And I think it's most important is one thing that the Queen's Future Successor offers is mentors. Each person needs to have a mentor. I, you know, oftentimes young people or people in general think that they don't need anybody uh, in order to, to, to make their dreams come true and put their plans or their visions together. But it's so important because when you have a mentor, that's someone has probably traveled that path before. Mm -hmm. They know the do's and the don'ts or they can give you some insight because oftentimes we think about doing things and we think about doing it on our own. But the Queen's Future Successor says, hey, we are mentors. We're here for you to help answer questions, provide you with the avenues of things that you need in order to move forward. So ment having a mentor is most important. And we want to make sure that those that are traveling that, that journey have a mentor. Always know that there, you need someone there to help see the other side of the coin, OK? Mm -hmm. and, and always let you know that the grass may not be green on the other side because you see someone else doing it. And as long as you have a mentor, I can assure you, you're going to do well. And that's one thing that the Queen's Future Successor is very adamant about providing, and that's a mentor. So keep that in mind, young people. A mentor is very important. 
Well, this has been absolutely amazing. I appreciate you for stepping in and providing us as well as the youth of these programs some information on being an entrepreneur. I would like to say it has been a pleasure being a co-facilitator this evening. I am going to turn it back over to Regina Eileen Wooder, the president and CEO. Thank you. Thank you. This has been truly amazing. Even though this is a program that is geared in person, we have had to move to an online format, and I think it went well. I want to thank the youth in the program, our funding sponsors, OSHA, for making this a possibility. Thank you to our partner, the Clarence E. Phillips Ascend Foundation. I want to thank the youth in the program, our funding sponsors, OSHA, for making this a possibility. Thank you to our partners and Sanjia Wiggins. For more information on Queen's Beach Successors, contact me at 248-431-2955 or go on social media, Queen's Future Successors, or to my website, queensfuturesuccessors.org. Thank you for joining us tonight and have a great evening. Welcome to Queen's Future Successors, where Regina Eileen Woodard is the president and CEO. The mission of Queen's Future Successors is to provide financial literacy and educational information to empower the next generation of high school students and young adults to grow financial wealth. We are excited to partner with the Clarence E. Phillips Ascend Foundation Mark for Success program in conjunction with OSHA to educate youth in the community and prepare them for future success. Queen's Future Successors is excited to share our jewels for success, which focus on financial IQs, saving for the present and the future, the basics of establishing a checking and savings account, financial wellness, creating a budget and managing expenses, and entrepreneurship. By the end of this program, youth will be economically empowered and financially savvy. We are excited about the youth in our program and look forward to what their future brings.